What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Pack a Day podcast. You know her already. She's Rachel Hotmeyer. I'm Andy Herman. We have a literal ton to get to. And Rachel, we have to start off. Please tell me that you are not on the COVID-19 injured reserve list because we have enough people on it and we are going to need you this week for anything that you can give covering this team. I am not on the COVID list. Are you on the COVID list? I am not on the COVID list. I am good to go. Uh, if they need me at wide receiver, it's not going to be pretty. I will die, but I'll do it if that's what they need. Uh, I will take a hit from, you know, whatever from JJ Watt. Like I'll, I'll go, I'll, I'll go try to clear out JJ Watt and he'll just throw me into the stands. Sure. Okay. I see myself, you know, I could see it going two ways. I like the hybrid tight end we've got going this year. So I, I think I could, you know, get some blocking and chippy in there, but you know, I'd also love to fill in that corner. I have no problem just flinging myself in coverage because it's the only way we're getting anything done. So why not? Put me in, LaFleur. Yeah, my my extent of playing non-flag football, uh, I played middle school football and they right. put me in. And so they, first of all, they gave me shoulder pads that didn't fit. They gave me a helmet that the, the front part dug like this part. Like if, if, if I ever have awful takes, it's because my football helmet dug this far into my skull and I swear it punctured everything. So then I, I, I don't have any right pads. My helmet just hurts. My head hurts. And I go and I go to do the like nutcrackers the very first day. Some person just levels me and I'm like, you know what? I'm good. I'm going to analyze football rather than play football because that is a better calling in life for me than that. So yeah, I probably wouldn't be too helpful, but uh, they, they might need people. We've we've got a lot to discuss, Rachel. We do. And and for the record, I played a couple games of powder puff and I, I've been known to use my elbows in the right way. So honestly, together we could have minimal impact, but <laughs> what we're better at is breaking all this drama down for everybody. Yeah. Obviously, we've been following it religiously. It starts with Joe Barry being diagnosed or testing positive on Monday. And obviously throughout the whole sentiment of this, you know, it's easy to just talk about the analytics and the news events of this, but obviously, you know, I see a lot of Packers fans getting angry or irate at the things happening, but above all else, you got to wish that these guys are okay, that everybody's involved because being vaccinated, as we know, doesn't absolve you from transmitting the disease or worse, suffering serious health consequences, no matter how well conditioned of an athlete you are. Just look up Eduardo Rodriguez on the Red Sox uh, left with a heart condition last year. Right. No, it, it's health is first and foremost. And yeah. yes, this is a sport. And yes, we all follow this because we love the sport, but people are people first and their health is by far most important. So hopefully everyone out of this is able to remain healthy. Right. We've got some good news on, yeah. uh, on uh, Tuesday. We've got some bad news on Tuesday. Let's start with the bad, save some of the good. The biggest was Alan Lazard also placed on the COVID-19 list. Yeah. This does not sound like we know for sure, at least unless you've seen differently that, uh, he has tested positive. It seems more like he was a close contact yep. was not vaccinated. So he had to be put on the list. will not be able to play on Thursday while there was that slight hope for Devante. And we will hold out that slight, slight hope for Devante. Alan Lazard will not be able to play. Let's go there first. Yep. Likely no Devante now, no Alan Lazard. Well, let's just get this out of the way too. The good news was Malik Taylor was activated exactly. from the list. So yep. we did get some good news for the Packers receivers as well. Where are your, where's your mind at with this wide receiver core? Because Lazard and, 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 and Adams being down at MVS as of right now, still on IR far from ideal. I mean, this is, of course it happens to the Packers on a short week. It's the weirdest thing to happen on a short week. I mean, logistically the only thing worse would be Rogers himself going out. You have to think, and then you, you did knock Rogers. on wood right now. You do not, <laughs> you know, we're not putting and, that in the ether right now. No. And, and Rogers very quickly said, no, he wasn't concerned at all about himself. You know, I, I don't know how rooted in logistics that really is because at the end of the day, that's your number one target. Right. You have to assume that Rogers and Adam spend a lot of time together um, both on and off the field, but regardless um, Devonte Adams has publicly stated that he is vaccinated. So that means if you are vaccinated, fully vaccinated against COVID-19, you cannot end up on this list unless you test positive. So there was the slight chance that it could have been a false positive. That means he would have had to test negative Tuesday and Wednesday in order to travel with the team Wednesday afternoon to Arizona to play Thursday. I think a people, a lot of people forget that the team does travel Wednesday afternoon. I've confirmed that with the team today. They are leaving tomorrow yeah. when you see this today afternoon and there's a question of oh well would the packers fly a separate private plane out 
if it was Devontae Adams, maybe, right. maybe, maybe. But honestly, I could see them going either way. That That's money to spend that the backers don't exactly have. Um, I also think I'm fascinated with how being a publicly owned team plays into that decision, you know? Um, I think it's just interesting, the sentiment around that sort of idea. But regardless, um, this, at this point in time, likely places Devontae Adams out. I feel like we may have heard differently, but also the team is not permitted to disclose players test results so then you get to the alan lazard development today alan lazard is an unvaccinated close contact meaning now he's pretty much out for thursday um even if that was a false positive there is no time for him to test negatively twice 24 hours before unless again they decide to charter a private plane i just don't see that happening i do not think that's something that they're really alan lazard's going to be out this game for sure yeah Yeah, I, i don't think that there's any question about that Adams, again, will will withhold some slight, slight sliver of hope, yeah. uh, but Lazard looks out. So let, let's let's go over this in the, in the idea that potentially Adams is out, Lazard is out. Yep. We know Malik Taylor's back. They put Juwan Winfrey on the protected practice squad list, so he's yep. going to be up this week in some capacity. You can pretty much put that. Love yeah, to exactly. See it. Right? I'm going to go on a limb and say MVS plays in some capacity this week, okay. but I think it'll be – I don't think he's going to play like 60 snaps. I think it'll be some sort of limited action. How do you feel about this receiver core that could be, you know, Cobb, MVS, EQ, Amari Rogers, Malik Taylor, Juwan Winfrey? So before we get there, I just had a thought pop in my head and I have to put it out in the universe. Um, We all know Aaron Rodgers has a plane. We all know he has his own plane. Um, One brain cell in my head just thought, well, maybe, maybe if, Devonte Adams test negative today and tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday. Can't make it on the team plane. Maybe Rogers flies now. I don't know. That's something that wouldn't cost the Packers anything. Just an idea. I want to put it out there in case I'm right. Um, hey, if, if Adams tests negative, he'll he'll be there. That would be my guess. If he, if he tests negative twice, they'll find a way to get him there. Would be my right. guess. I, I so, mean, Adams might just drive that. Like I like he'll like they'll figure out a way. I, yeah. I I'm fairly confident in that, but. Just like okay, I think back to the receiver core. I do wonder if if this situation puts a little pressure on the return of MBS. You know, you want to be injury conscious of these guys, but I do wonder if they might be saying we weren't going to bring you back this Thursday, but now we are in a limited capacity, like you said, and say we're really going to watch it, but we really need the assurance. We really need some help in this room. You know, uh, I'm personally again. Juwan Winfrey has been a guy that has had to take advantage of the opportunities he's given. He had a blowout camp this year. I am super hyped for him to really take advantage of any snaps he gets. Um, MBS could come off IR. And again, what we have active so far is Amari, Cobb, Malik, and EQ. It's interesting. I guess that's all you could say about it. You know, I, I hope for a more balanced role, maybe between Amari and Cobb. Now that we're really, really leaning on that, maybe even some more experimentation outside of the slot, who knows? Um, but I also think the wide receiving core at this point, isn't going to be the number one strength to if they can beat the Cardinals this week, you know, um, I think something else to look at is the Cardinals have struggled so far with pass catching running backs. And would you look at that? The Packers have two of those and AJ Dillon and Aaron Jones. And I think, you know, we've seen people light up the end zone, different faces in there every week. And this might be more of a time for that. Maybe more of a blowout from Jones and maybe getting Dylan in there again. So I think, in order to shore this wide receiver core up, you have to include the running backs in potential pass catchers against the Cardinals right now. Yeah, I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say that Green Bay does not lose this game because of their weapons on offense. But they lose it for another reason? I, I, maybe, but I don't think the I don't think the determining factor is going to be whether MVS and Devontae Adams play in this game. And I think, let me just put it this way, right? If I would have told you a few weeks ago that this Packers secondary would have mostly been just fine with Jair without Jair Alexander, yeah. you would have said, Andy, you were insane. Absolutely. You, said, you know, Crazy right? Time. Like yeah. if you would have said that Green Bay got through a game with no Preston Smith and Zadarius Smith, you would have said, Andy, you're insane. And and actually had a good amount of pressure in that game, by the way, like a really good amount of pressure in that game. You just said, Andy, you're insane. These co- this coaching staff through and through offense, defense is very, very good at getting the players that are there ready to play. Matt LaFleur is one of the best in the business at focusing on what his players that he has available to him do well and putting them in positions to succeed. And if you had to like, ask me, like comparing to other, you know, just some of the other teams in the NFL, 
a running back core still of Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon, Robert Tunyon, Mercedes Lewis at tight end with Randall Cobb, EQ, maybe still M- uh, MVS at wide receiver. There's plenty of mouths still to feed on that offense. You still have Amari Rogers, Malik Taylor to play, potentially some Juwan Winfrey. This is not to me going to be like this dearth of weapons. And oh, by the way, you still have Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. Now, do I have some level of concern that, you know, JJ Watt and 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 uh Chandler Jones and that front could, you know, beat up on the Packers offensive line a little bit? Yes. Do I have some fear that because Green Bay needs to get rid of the ball quicker because of J.J. Watt and Chandler Jones, which means that those wide receivers need to win on their routes quicker so that Rodgers can get rid of the ball quicker. Yes, I have some concerns in those sort of things, but I do believe that this will be a run first offense. And frankly, that's probably the way it should be anyway. I don't think you want this Arizona Cardinals offense to have a ton of time on the field with Kyler Murray going against this still very beat up Packers defense, by the way. I know the talk is going to be Adams and Lazard and everything else, but the defense is missing a lot of guys. I think this is going to be a run first offense. I think that fits this game well. And I think they're still going to put up points against Arizona. Yeah, and, and that is going to be a challenge. But again, you can't deny that that's the Packers' method to success this year. And LaFleur isn't shying yes. away from that in other McCarthy-era, you know, traditions. Um, you know, Arizona has that third-best run defense. But at the end of the day, this is going to be big dog against big dog type of fight. You know, this is, this is going to be a gritty game no matter what. I think it was going to be regardless if teams were at full strength. But at the end of the day, Packers have found success when you run the ball to pass the ball. And even if it's Jones and Dylan, and even maybe getting Hill into the rotation again, he was early on Sunday chipping away just yard by yard at those bits. Like they know they can on the downs again, forward progress is forward progress at the end of the day. It is. And I think one of the other things that's a little bit beneficial here, we haven't seen a ton of creativity from this Packers offense these past couple of weeks. And I've, I've talked about this in the past. I think green Bay has been holding on to some things. I don't think they've, really experimented with the full functionality of their offense so far. Now, maybe with Adams and Lazard and some of those guys out, maybe they can't do that, but I still think they've got a couple of tricks up their sleeve. And I'm not talking like flea flickers and things. I'm talking like just things in their offense that have been unscouted looks that they think they are going to be able to attack teams with. I think we're going to see some of that stuff against Arizona brought out. I think we're going to see the running backs heavily involved in the passing game. I think this is going to be an Aaron Jones heavy game. And I think the other thing that's very beneficial is Green Bay didn't run, especially in the second half, but they ran like 50 plays of offense this past week, which is a little bit, is is certainly lower than normal. But a lot of that too was like backed up in their own uh, end zone. And like, it just, it, it wasn't, they were almost in like certain down and distance situations. And then the two minute warning before the half, I think you're going to see this Matt LaFleur offense run the way that it's supposed to this week. And I think it could be very fun to watch, even with some of those key guys missing. I, I totally agree with that sentiment. I think at the end of the day, you know, teams say, oh, we're not overestimating or underestimating Washington. We know they bring toughness to the table, but at the end of the day, I think they purposely picked from a very shallow bucket of plays there. Um, I also think, you know, Roger said today being Tuesday that, um, you know, they practice a lot more unscouted and schemes and looks last week and just pocketed them for Arizona. Yeah. So I think that they were hoping that again, they jump into this game with a lot of creativity in their back pocket. You know, again, LaFleur has recently shined with his gold zone play calling. So we have to hope for that now all over the field at this point, if you are really looking to make, progress again against the Cardinals but at the end of the day there are also guys that still haven't had the impact you talk about this team really being able to coach guys up to speed no matter what the situation is Whitney Merciless has had an impact Rasul Douglas has had great impact so far Jalen Smith is not one of those guys yet I mean through two games 27 snaps one sack yeah uh I'm not super surprised I guess I'll put it that way so you look at the Dallas Cowboys right like Whitney Merciless the Texans releasing him makes sense. Even though he was playing decent football, there's no need for a Whitney Merciless on their team. A 30 year old in the last year of his deal, they probably don't want to win too many games, you know, quite frankly. And you want to play your younger players, see who can hold up to the, you know, everything like that. Like Whitney Merciless on the Texans just makes zero sense from all angles. It makes sense to release him and let him go play for a contender this season, which is exactly what he did by going to Green Bay. Jalen Smith is not that this is a number one or, you know, the number one team in the NFC East Dallas Cowboys. He was starting for their team Mm -hmm. and he was one of the vocal leaders of their defense. 
they have to pay money to release him. They take a massive cap hit to release him. Now, I do know that there's obviously, if he gets hurt, they have to guarantee him money in next year, which absolutely played a part. But if he's playing well and he's one of the leaders of your defense, you have zero concern over that. You pay him, you take the risk, you keep him on your team. You are competing for an NFC East you know, in a spot in the playoffs, they're the favorites in the East. If Jalen Smith is playing well, you do not let him out of that building in any way, shape or form. He was struggling mightily in Dallas. He was not the same player, certainly that he was at Notre Dame. He was not the same player that he was a couple of seasons ago. That's not to say that he can't add something to this Packers defense. He's obviously got, still has very good athleticism. I think Green Bay, and I, I talked to Aaron Nagler about this earlier this week. I think Green Bay is trying to you know, cobble together a consistent linebacker by basically platooning Jalen Smith, Chris Barnes, Oren Burks. Yeah. I'm picking little things out of what each of you can maybe do well. Can we make you combined into one good linebacker next to Devondre? Exactly. One. Right. And Oren Burks has made some plays here and there, uh, not consistently. Chris Barnes has made some plays here and there, but the times he gets a little bit lost, he'll go the wrong way. He'll, he'll get beaten coverage. And then Jalen Smith, we've seen him, you know, there's a screenplay where he kind of overruns a screen, doesn't, you know, isn't able to get to the sack in the, in the backfield this past week, which Chris Barnes just did against a running back a, a couple of weeks ago. We just haven't seen that from Jalen Smith. Now, again, that's not to say that he can't add something to this team. I still think there's an opportunity for that, but where we've seen Razul Douglas come in, play very well, where we've seen Whitney Merciless come in and make an impact. And we've seen some of these guys be able to come in and do that. It hasn't been the same with Jalen Smith so far. I'm willing to give it time. I think in the two week, you, you know, period, you have a little bit more accident forgiveness, but if he continues to display this type of play, you just got to go with Burks and, and Barnes and say, you know what, just didn't work out. There was very little risk. We hope we hoped we were going to get a reward out of it. We didn't. And we're going to move on and we're going to go with those guys instead. I, I completely agree with you at the end of the day. You know, when you, when I look at those three Barnes is still on top at the end of the day, it might not be a hundred percent, but he still has a majority percentage of what they're looking for on impactful, Agreed. consistent linebacker over Burks and, you know, Jalen Smith right now. Um, another position that I, I think is so fun to talk about um, after national tight ends day is, is the hybrid tight end they've developed. Even Lazard called himself an honorary one, which I love embracing that because you see other guys around the re- league, like Landon Collins, for example, who insists he's a safety, even though he is hundred percent a hybrid linebacker right now. And he just doesn't like to personally admit he's at that role. Yes. And I love this from this Packers offense. And we see from Tunyon and Mercedes Lewis and Lazard and, and, you know, some of those aren't exact hybrids, but I think one of the things that Matt LaFleur really developed within this team, the day he got here was that you're going to play football and whether you're a receiver or running back, a tight end, whatever your position may say, there are certain responsibilities and roles that we need out of you. And that includes blocking, that includes catching, that includes running. And it doesn't matter if you're a fullback, tight end, wide receiver, H-back, whatever, you're going to do a little bit of all of it. And there's going to be day, there's going to be drives. If you're Alan Lazard, that you get five catches, 60 yards or whatever it was in a touchdown. Yep. There's going to be, you know, five weeks before that, six weeks before that, whatever it was, where he gets 10 catches total in a touchdown. And you're going to do a lot of blocking in there. There's going to be times where AJ Dillon is going to get his share of the load. There's going to be times where Jones gets it. There's going to be days where Adams gets near 20 targets. There's going to be days where he gets six or seven, but you, every play, every drive, every quarter, every game is going to be different. And all of these players on this team have the ability to step up. And I think the buy-in that he has from this entirety of this roster. And I think Mercedes Lewis is the poster boy for it of just doing the dirty work and again, Lazard is certainly another one that buy-in that he got. And it's a lot easier to get that buy-in when you go 13 and three in your first season and go to an NFC championship as a coach and then go 13 and three again into another NFC championship. That that's, that's what that does is that those wins get you that buy-in from your players. You see all the players on the offense buying in, they're blocking for each other. They care about each other. And you can see when, when Mercedes Lewis gets a big play, the entire sideline is surrounding them, you know, and, and, and happy for them. They've built a culture here, especially on offense with how those uh, players work for each other. And it's, it's awesome to watch because that's what you need to do in today's NFL. Yeah, this this collective buy into the not by one, but by team mentality and game planning and everything. It's just so key. And I and I love that LaFleur is about it so much. And I think that is central and purposeful to his plan with the Packers. But I also 
and I might sound a little, little Rogers-esque when saying this, but if you don't have a psychological leader like Mercedes Lewis, like those types of veteran leaders that you want to keep in the building for that type of character, and as he says, it's all about the people, I don't know that you have this because having such an exemplar of that, of putting your head down, grinding it out, getting to work, eating the bread crumb, crumbs, balling on the weekends, like so much of all of this is embodied in him that it's, it's hard to follow that path and be so dogged in that mentality without looking up to someone right there in front of you who just embodies that on this team for so long. I, I just think at the end of the day, yeah, you can dream it, but when you can put someone in front of you that does it like this, it, it, it really inspires so many guys. So it, it's just awesome to see people really embracing that. No, I, I totally agree. And I think in a way that's what Aaron Rodgers is talking about, right? Is it's, it's, yeah. If you, if you look at Mercedes Lewis, Mercedes Lewis is kind of the classic example of a player that they've discarded over the course of the years. Like, all right, he can't move really anymore. Right. Like he's, you, you watch him run down the field. It's not pretty. It's like at this stage of his career, they usually are going for somebody that is a, a better athlete at those sort of positions, somebody a little bit younger, somebody that doesn't have the wear and tear, but as we've seen, a player like Mercedes Lewis has a ton of value. It doesn't matter if he's, you know, 30 plus years old and he's not moving the same way, what he can do on a football field and what he can do to be an example for everyone else on this roster has a ton of value. And that's what Aaron Rodgers was talking about in his press conference when he talked about players like Jordy Nelson, Randall Cobb, Charles Woodson, et cetera. Yeah they might be a step slower than they used to be. They might be two steps slower than, you know, a guy like an Eric Stokes, but you know what, that experience goes a very long way in knowing how to compete in a certain way. And of course, there's always a fine line here because we've seen a ton of teams, NBA, NFL, NHL, MLB, where they stack their roster with old, old players and they just don't have the juice and they just can't do it. But you also see teams go ultra young and try to go, you know, well, yeah, they're all going to be fast and they all have good legs and everything like that. Well, they just don't have the experience. It takes a balance of the experience and the youth and the hunger and all of it coming together at the right time for the right reasons. And that's when something magical happens. And I'm not saying that that's necessarily going to happen this season, but you could tell again today how overjoyed Aaron Rodgers was by the veterans that they brought in, like a Razul Douglas, like a Jalen Smith, whether it'll end up working out or not, like a Whitney Merciless, you can tell he is stoked about the veterans on this team and what they can bring to this Packers team moving forward. Yeah, hundred percent. At the end of the day, you know, players are so much more than their data, than their on the field performance, than the scoreboard. It's the intangibles. It's the character. It's the personality. It's the experience. It's the veteran leadership. It's these are players that are people bringing something to a team and a team is a group of people, not just numbers. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and, you know, we go back to that mentality of, you know, it, it's the whole team, but it, you know, Matt LaFleur stated it from like day one, everyone's got to do their one eleventh. just do your job on that specific play. I think he's, you know, he's also made mention of that. Some of the things that, it hasn't worked. It's, it's been like, if you watch some of the lack of rhythm and things like that, it's usually one player that's, you know, miss, missing something every, you know, 10 people might be doing their job. One player isn't. And all of a sudden that whole play blows up because the one player missed the block or whatever the case may be. So I think they're still getting there from a, a rhythm and overall consistency standpoint, but you can tell the buy-in is there. And again, it's the, it's a lot of those veteran players who are bringing that mentality to the team. Speaking of veteran players who bring that mentality of the team, Sounds like David Bakhtiari, not going to play this week. If you kind of read between the lines from Matt LaFleur, I don't think that is of any surprise whatsoever if that ends up being the case. It always seemed like maybe Kansas City. And, you know, he talked about just how important it is to get this right. Like the time, effort, energy, everything that David Bakhtiari has put into his rehab to get to the point that he's at today. The last thing that you can have happen is him go out and then something happen where it re-aggravates or it gets worse or he tears it again or whatever the case may be. So the cautious approach here, absolutely the right approach, but certainly I don't think a big surprise that it's unlikely that he'll play this week. Absolutely. And again, when you look at these, you know, IR situations, it comes down to the severity of the injury. You know, uh, David Bakhtiari and all that he does, having a leg injury is so different um, than than bringing MBS back to speed on a shorter term injury at the end of the day. And it's just getting that timing right, securing both what the immediate immediate impact is that Bakhtiari has and his long term future is priority for all parties involved. Yeah, no, a, a million percent. All right. We got one more big topic that we got to get to. And uh, I, I have to ask you, 
how, how do you stop Kyler Murray? What's your, what's your game plan going in for this Cardinals? We know Jerry Gray is going to call the plays now. So put your Jerry Gray hat on and uh, what are you dialing up to, to stop Kyler Murray? Um, uh, can you dial up a 100% Packers special teams performance? Cause that would be nicely timed. Yeah. Um, I also think a, a turnover is really going to be key because we've seen the way the Packers bounce back from that turnover. It's, it's a real confidence booster from them, especially when it comes right after halftime. Um, I, I think a turnover would be nice um, at the end of the day, controlling that possession as much as possible. But I also think getting those quarterback pressures, we've seen Rashawn Gary continue to grow. We've seen Dean Lowry make impressive plays. Um, there, there's a lot of intellect if you can just put it in the right places. There's a lot of football IQ there. If Jerry Gray can make it all work, it'd be a beautiful sight to see. Um, I really think that pressure on Kyler Murray is going to be the key to win. If we if we look at what the receiving core is, pressure on Kyler is going to be the key. Yeah, I think that's a million percent right. And I think, you know, one thing that they're going to have to really balance is pressure without over pursuit. And we saw that against Taylor Heineke this past week where, yeah, everyone's getting upfield and there's some pressure there. But if there's a hole... Yeah. Kyler Murray, and it doesn't take a huge hole for Kyler Murray to escape and exactly. pick up that yard. So, yeah, exactly. So I think, you know, wh- what they do with, you know, Devondre Campbell in the middle of the field, I think we actually could see a little bit more of, of Jalen Smith and Oren Burks uh, because of their speed at that second level and not wanting to have, you know, somebody that maybe can't catch up with a Kyler Murray quite as well. So I think that could be something that they do. I think they're going to have to be creative with Rashawn Gary because Rashawn Gary does like to kind of burst around, you know, he's, he's just, he's so on fire with his play consistently that like, it's sort of a one track mind where he's just going 99 miles an hour. And it's at some point, like you almost have to slow that down and say, all right, we actually have to hold up a little bit more. We want to collapse the pocket, which he's the, like one of the best in the league at frankly, but it takes everyone just kind of collapsing that pocket around Marie rather than everyone kind of doing their own thing. Exactly. So I think it's going to take a lot of discipline. That's why these, first of all, it is so hard to play a Kyler Murray or Lamar Jackson in season period uh, because they're, they're so just difficult to contain and it takes a different game plan than you're used to in most weeks but then add in a short week, missing a defensive coordinator and all the players that Green Bay is missing, and it just makes it that much harder. It's going to just take their athletes being really freaking good in this game, staying under control and, and getting pressure without over pursuing. Kenny Clark, Rashawn Gary, Devondre Campbell in that front seven, I think are going to have to have massive, massive weeks. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, Rashawn Gary is in a cell train straight to the quarterback. Um, and again, you you want to collapse the pocket strategically. As much as I would love to see Rashawn Gary just burst every single snap, truly that's my ideal football game. Yeah. But again, that forces holes to open for Kyler Murray. Um, I, I want to see, listen, I'm so high on Devondre Campbell. I will never stop raving about the fact that he only cost Packers 2 million buckaroos. But Um, I don't know. I'd like to see some more WWE moves out of the guy. He's got the speed. He takes it down. He almost never misses a tackle. I don't know if he really ever has for the Packers so far, but um, you know, I want to see some more punishment. I agree. I think he has that mentality. I think he has that ability. I think he's going to lay the lumber uh, coming up here on somebody because it's, it's about due time for him just to probably take, you know, level somebody over the middle of the field. We'll see if that happens this week. This Cardinals offense is fun to watch, and it's definitely going to be a challenge for this Packers defense. I think that kind of covers our topics today. Any other things that we uh, want to discuss, go over before we uh, get out of here? Just what a short week when you thought it'd be an easy one. Oh, boy, we were all wrong. Yeah, I mean, again, all of it, right? I don't know that anyone specifically anticipated the Cardinals being 7-0 and at this point, playing quite as well as they are. And then of course, all the COVID stuff, it, it uh, definitely makes it very, very challenging. And I, as I mentioned, I, I love these games. Like I like these sort of games where you're behind the eight ball and you've got to, you know, everyone needs to step up and do their one eleventh. Like I, I'm, I'm, this is one of the most, you know, anticipated that I'm going to be for a game in a while, because it just, it, it, it's a little bit of a, you've got nothing to lose mentality, even though there's obviously something to lose when you're going against a team that you very well could be competing for the number one seed for and, and just playoff seeding in general. So there is a lot to gain and lose in this game, but uh, with everything, it, it, the way that it is, I'm, I'm so excited to see how they perform. With the state of the NFL this year, you have to imagine that if the Packers are able to pull out a win on this, this is a huge gold star on Matt LaFleur's resume, truly. 
And um, it could put him in coach of the year running at the end of the day that this is an incredible hill that they face. And again, right. You have nothing to lose, but also it just like you're asking your players to do, you have to make the chips whenever possible. Um, I, I think this is an incredible challenge they have, and I think they're up for it, but man, is it going to be hard if they don't go into this right mentally and physically with what they have. It is. And, and let's be real too. That This is probably the, the biggest op- like opportunity is the wrong word, but this is yeah. probably the biggest risk of, of Matt LaFleur losing two straight games in the same season in his career, right? Going back to back at Arizona short week at Kansas city. I know Kansas city has looked very, very beatable by just about everyone these past few, you know, Garbage. weeks. but you also expect Kansas city to get right at some point. And they're always tough to beat in Kansas city. So, you know, that's going to be a tough game. So back to back Kyler Murray, Patrick Mahomes, that's, that's no walk in the park. And uh, these are going to be two very challenging games. We'll take it one step at a time and stick with Arizona. Rachel, you are amazing as always. Thank you so much for joining me. We will do this again in a week. It'll feel like, uh, like so much has happened in that time. Because It'll be like a bye week. It'll, it will be. So we'll, uh, we'll think of something creative to talk about. I think that's the day following the uh, trade deadline. So maybe oh, uh, Green Bay will have a new, new uh, you know, big player in town or something. Yeah. Who the heck knows? It'll be- we can only pray for something that good. There you go. Rachel, thank you as always. We'll be back here in a week. For those listening, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to follow Rachel on Twitter at Rachel Hotmeyer. Yes, sir. At Andy Herman NFL, at Packaday Podcast. We'll see you tomorrow. Until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.